Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, uh, I want to look at uh, Topaz Sharpen AI. It's a really awesome uh, plug-in and filter. It's a standalone product as well, but it's really nice. If you have an out-of-focus image or a slightly soft image, and it's, you know, you can't use it uh, because it's just too soft, you can use Sharpen AI to really bring that image into focus. And I'm going to show you how we can do that today. So let's get started. So I have this uh, image of this butterfly here, and it's a really good looking butterfly. And I used a, um, I used a very uh, shallow depth of field in this uh, image to give me a nice uh, blurry background here. And I really like that. But the image is slightly soft. Let me zoom into the image so you can see. See how soft it is. I missed the focus here. It's just not quite as sharp as I'd like it to be. And this flower, I want this front portion of the flower to be in focus. And it's not. And generally, that f this image would be just a throwaway. I wouldn't be able to use it. And you know how butterflies are. They flit from flower to flower. And I wasn't able to get this shot again. But I love the shot. And I was like, boy, it'd be great if I could fix it. Now, Photoshop has some ways of fixing focus. But... To be honest with you, they've never really worked for me. So uh, when Topaz came out with Sharpen AI, I downloaded a trial version of it. And I was like blown away with all the cool things that it could do. It'll take uh, slightly out of focus images and pull them into focus. It'll take images where you had a little bit of camera shake. It'll fix those kind of things. Uh, it's not a miracle, miracle cure, but I'll tell you what, it really works really well. And you'll see here in a minute. Uh, so the first thing I want to do, and I'm using this inside of Photoshop. You can also use Sharpen AI as a standalone product as well. But I'm in Photoshop, so I'm, gonna, I'm going to duplicate the background layer, and that's Command-J on a Mac, Control-J in a PC, so we can work non-destructively. Then I'm going to come up to Filter and come to Topaz Labs and look for Sharpen AI. You can see i got a bunch of different Topaz uh, filters here and plugins, and I love them. So here's Topaz Sharpen AI, so give that a click, and we'll launch Sharpen AI. All right, here we are inside of uh, Sharpen AI. Now it takes a few, uh, could take up to a minute, depending how fast your computer is. This computer's pretty fast. It's a new iMac 2019 model with 32 gigs of RAM and a pretty powerful uh, GPU, 8 gigabytes worth of GPU. And so we it already shows us our image at a 100% um, zoom, which is important because you really want to zoom into your image to see it. Now the interface up here, I just want to show you, you have a split screen here. So if you click that, you can drag that through and see what result you got. So on the right will be the... Uh, the edited portion from Sharpen AI, and on the left will be the original. Okay, so you can see it sharpened it up a little bit. Now this first method here, and we'll get into that in a second, but before I do that, we can also click original so we can see, let me click split here, so we can click original, we can see the original, click it again, and we're back to the edited version. Okay, so just wanted to show you that. And also the magnifying glass here you have, if you click this drop down here, you can zoom to 50%, 200%, 400%, but it defaults at 100 and generally that's pretty good for me. I usually leave it there. Up here you have undo and a redo. Okay, so you can play with that if you need to. And here you have select a processing mode. Now you have three different methods here. You have sharpen. That's just for your uh, standard sharpening and generally you're going to be using that. But if you're having an issue with your image where it's a uh, little camera shake or slightly soft out of focus image, you have these other two modes. You have stabilize. That would take care of like uh, camera shake and things like that. And then you have focus. And generally what I'd like to do is try each one of these just to see. Now I'm going to click on stabilize. Now it takes it a little bit of time here because it's got to process the image. And it's using artificial intelligence here. So we'll just wait it out here and let it do its thing here. And then we'll see our result. It's a rainy day here in Pittsburgh, PA. Not a big fan of the rain. But uh, it's a good day to do some processing when it's raining. Get caught up in all the work that you wanted to get done, but you didn't have time to do it because you're out shooting. Okay, so this is a good opportunity to take to do that. All right, we're almost done here. And this is the stabilized version. So let's click on the split screen here. 
And so there is the before. Now let me slide this through. Okay, and here's the after. As you can see, it's it's better than the sharpen uh, method, but it's still a little bit on the soft side and still unusable for me. Now you do have some sliders up here where you can click remove blur and make it a little bit sharper that way. You can also move this suppress slider, suppress noise slider to the right and remove some noise. I've already denoised this before I started and you can add some grain if you needed to. And you can do an auto adjustment. Now I have it set up that when I bring it into uh, Sharpen AI it automatically does the auto adjustment but then you can come here and alter it if you'd like. All right, I'm not going to take the time to move this remove blur up. It would get a little bit sharper if I did it, but it still wouldn't be right where I wanted it to be, and it'll take some time to process. So let's go to the next method, and let's click on focus. And a lot of times I'll I'll just try each one of these method methods just to see what they'll do. Now we'll just wait that out a little bit here, and uh, but I'll tell you this particular product has saved so many shots for me. I'll tell you. It's well worth the money. It's not a cheap program, but it is truly, truly worth it. All right. So we're at 50%. We're waiting patiently. And soon we'll see if we can save our image. And I surely hope it works. So we're almost there. Let me slide this slider. Let me see if it'll let me move it. Now it won't let me move it while it's processing. It's too labor intensive. All right, let me slide this over. So we'll slide this to the left. And oh my gosh, look at that. Look at that focus. Look down here on the butterfly here. That is super sharp. Look, look at that. It's so blurry, but now look, it is super sharp. And watch when I come over the flower here. Look at that. Look at the detail that brought out. You see the little hairs. I don't know if they're really called hairs, but on the butterfly, but right there. But that is amazing. Now, if I felt I needed more uh, sharpness here, I could take the remove blur and move that a little bit more to the right. But I'm really happy with that. I think that looks awesome. Now, all I have to do is come down to click apply. Now, this processing takes slightly longer than the preview uh, processing because now it's actually baking this edit into the image. So we'll just wait a couple could take up to a minute sometimes. And again, like I said, this is a faster computer, so it, it, it's, it's very uh, processor intensive, but it is well worth the wait. Gosh, I can, I can lose a minute of my day to get an image that comes back to me. So again, this image would have been just a throwaway image, but I like the way the, the butterfly was on the actual flower itself, and I like the background, and I thought, this is a really cool image, and I'd like to save it if I could. Up till Topaz um, Sharpen AI, to me, there was no way to really fix this image, to really save it. So we're almost there, and we'll be right back into Photoshop here in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and... Final stages, blast off. Now we're back into Photoshop. Let's zoom up into this butterfly here. And look at the detail in there. I mean, it brought all that detail back. It's amazing. All the little hairs around here. Look at this antler. I don't know what you call that. Sorry, I'm, I'm very bad at, these, at naming things like this. I love flower photography, but gosh, I don't know the names of most of the flowers that I take images of. So let's click on layer one's eyeball here. Here's the before and there's the after. Look at the detail of this area right in here and over here. But look at the detail before and after. This image is saved. Let me zoom out. And so now an image that would have been a throwaway is now something I can use. Now I can go ahead and further process this image from here. Well, that's Sharpen AI. It's a pretty amazing uh, filter. I think it's really awesome. It saves so many images for me. You need to maybe uh, download a free trial of it and try it for yourself. See if it's something that's worth it to you. I know it's not real cheap, but uh, it is well worth the money. I really believe it is, and it'll really save some images for you. And it's also great for just uh, sharpening up your images. If you've got the focus right in the camera, sharpen up the images. 
it uh, does a really nice job and it also removes uh, some background noise and things like that too so it's really nice if you like this video today please give it a like and share it with your friends if you're not yet subscribed to my channel please do so and click that bell notification icon. This way you'll be informed of all the new training videos that I, that I have coming out. I'm going to be looking at uh, Topaz Gigapixel, I'm going to be looking at uh, Adjust AI and uh, JPEG to RAW. We'll look at all those extra plugins. And I'm also going to look at some older plugins that are still available through Topaz, like Topaz Restyle. It's a great one as well. Well, thanks again for joining me today in the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly, and I'll see each and every one of you here next time.